Welcome to your world, Chris. Well, I thought we'd start with Christ's Tram Museum. Great. Dear Mum, Yorkshire is lovely, not like you said at all. They can smile, and they do sell my pasta sauce. Hi, I'm Ollie Hayes, and you're watching The Fan Carpet, and we are here at the London Transport Museum for the premiere of Sightseers, a dark comedy from British director Ben Wheatley. We'll be chatting to him as well as the cast, including Alice Lowe and Steve Oram, who also co-wrote the film. Let's check it out. Tell us what audiences can really expect. Well, I think they can actually expect to see that. I mean, that's, that's sort of the heart of the film for us, was uh, celebrating the British holiday, and we kind of... Uh, uh, hopefully we people will go and see these sites, but obviously it's a bit, it's a bit more to it than that. You know, it's about a couple who go caravanning and they've got an interesting hobby. My character introduces his new girlfriend, played by Alice Lowe, uh, into into this uh, world of serial killing, and she sort of takes it and runs with it. And that's uh, yeah. That's what it's all about. And kind of tonally, I guess, is what it, it's very British, and we, the British love a dark comedy. And like, yeah. so for you personally, like, what were your sort of cultural influences that shaped the script? Because obviously you wrote that as well. Yeah, oh, well, so many. I mean, yeah, um, God, it's, it's, I think probably our parents, you know, taking us on these holidays in the first place, and uh, you know, going just going back through. Uh, films like the Ealing Comedies and uh, also, you know, Mike Lee and Alan Clark and just loads of people who uh, work in this way that we've, we've always loved and, yeah, I don't know, too many to mention really. And also, you know, we, we kind of were influenced very much by American genre stuff like, uh, you know, uh, Badlands and, uh, you know, uh, Honeyman Killers, blah, blah, all these kind of things which were kind of just doing an American genre in a really uncool way. That was what made us okay. made us laugh. And obviously, I mean, you co-wrote with uh, Alice. Okay, yeah. but how did that process work? As in, did, did you like maybe write your own character's dialogue? Did you? How did that? Balance? Yeah. Well, we did. Yeah. We, we Alice and I wrote these characters as uh, you know in an improvisational way, and we kind of as we started off, we started off doing them as comedy characters in a in a comedy scenario. So we kind of jam the jam the dialogue and just mess around really and so that, that kind of process happened throughout the whole thing and yeah we did we did write our own characters really and uh, it, it all became yeah that's the whole the whole script comes from an improvisational approach I'd say yeah yeah and you mentioned you kind of you, you brought them to life as comedy characters do you have a personal favourite gag or a line of dialogue from the movie that you enjoyed uh, 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 well you know there's lots of them I, I like I like other people's stuff I like Johnny Harris with his uh, crisps line cheap crisps are, are full of horrors um, Richard Glover obviously getting out of the uh, stupid carapod and nearly falling over uh, Eileen Davis uh, at the beginning when she's at, uh, she, she says oh, this, I know people that have had some terrible trouble in caravans uh, what about Louise she fell out of it <laughs> it's just hilarious <laughs> you know it's brilliant it's simple, it's such a great simple but ride. hilarious <laughs> and, uh, yeah. and we, you obviously got Ben on board a great talent now did, he, yeah. did you approach him did he approach you how did that come about yeah we well we, we were looking for a director uh, Alice and I had written, written the script for about five years and then uh, we were looking for a director and we knew Ben from uh, from working with him in comedy. Uh, we've, we've done a show called The Wrong Door with him, both me and Alice, and uh, we sort of knew him socially. So we went, oh yeah, you've got, we, you've got to do it because he's, he, he shares the same sort of sensibilities with uh, you know likes all that sick, sick stuff. You know and did he, did he kind of shape your script much after you did it? Did it yeah. that change the dynamic during his? Well, yeah. Period? I mean, he, yeah, he focused the script, and uh, you know we helped. Just make, you know his, his experience from the last two films were really were really useful and uh, yeah he helped us kind of knock it together and focus things so added a few little things but essentially it's the same kind of script you know with um, that's you know we without with the story you know that the characters are all the same and the, the story is basically the same. Can you tell us a little bit, I mean, for everyone who's not seen this film, people who maybe are expecting a lovely little film about a couple visiting National Trust sites, <laughs> and what can they expect, and your character in particular? Well, it still is a lovely little film about a, a couple on a lovely little British holiday, but it's interspersed with blood and gore and murder and rage and jealous, jealous yeah. fits of uh, envy. Um, so it's a whole range of human emotions. It's... Um, it's all the arguments that you ever had on holiday rolled into one. Uh, plus, if you exploded and actually started doing bad things. Okay, and you mentioned kind of the, 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 the range of you got gore and horror comedy. You obviously wrote the script as well. How did you kind of balance that when you were writing with Steve? Did you want it to fall into one genre in particular? Or? 
I think we were conscious that it was going to be a mixture of genres, but uh, you know that was the initial concept. But once we started developing the characters, it became all about the characters and all about the story, their love story really, and we got really involved in them as real people and wanted them to be as realistic as people as as possible. Because I think that's the key. You know, we knew the key to kind of getting the audience watching was if they identified with the characters, even though they're sick murderers, that they're sort of. 90% normal and just want love like like most of the human beings on planet Earth so uh, we kind of thought if we could get that right and get a heart to the story then yeah. we would be halfway there towards gaining the audience's Definitely, trust. Yeah. And I mean, you co-wrote it together and how, yeah. how does that process work? Did you kind of focus on your own character and write your own dialogue or did you bounce off? I mean we joke that it's formed through arguments, our writing is done through arguments so one, one of us goes I think my character should say this and the other one goes well my character is going to say this okay. in response but that ends up being quite funny, it's sort of quite classic double act stuff you know we, we improvise a lot when we're writing and go into character but then you do that for about a week and you fill up all the scenes up with content and then you put your writer's hat on and then start dissecting it in a bit more of a formulaic way and going does this work, does this you know, we need to restructure this and this seems crap, let's get rid of it, that sort of thing. And, and then we go back to improving again. That's all, I see, because you see what saying, you kind of develop those common characters. Um, yeah. But you, uh, you kind of mentioned at the beginning, um, when you uh, kind of, I mean, I was gonna, actually, no, I was just going to say, do you have a favourite, because it's a great, I mean, obviously the comedy <laughs> moments are great, do you have a favourite gag or a line of dialogue that kind of comes across in the movie? Um, I really like the mother character generally I think when we were writing the mother we kind of thought we might have written the funniest character in the movie for someone else to play and then we found Eileen Davis who's like the most ama amazing comic actress big revelation as like this hilarious sort of evil character in, in the film evil but sort of you know lovable as well relish you know you relish her evil yeah. um, so I quite like the things that she says where, you know, she says you're you're not a friend, you're just a relative and things like that. <laughs> yeah. Like her her own psychosis that she has. Yeah, you've had a great <laughs> run in your career so far, like, like kill list. Is there, does this put like pressure on you to turn in the goods each time, the harder bubble, etc. Do you feel, because each film has been heaps in praise. Yeah, yeah, well, you know, you, 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 I think the, the rule of thumb is always to try and make something good. I don't think everyone tries that. I don't think that's, a, you know, no one sits out to make a bad film. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I think it's, uh, it's going all right, you know. Yeah, and you've obviously sent out a lot of fans Ed the right name, maybe you helped you produce the movie. That must be a great boost personally as well as for the films. Yeah, no, that was um, that was a big deal to be involved with Edgar and with um, um, a Big Talk, yeah. Yeah, and tonally it's very, I mean, it's obviously very uniquely British and we love a dark comedy. What are your kind of cultural influences that help you shape this story? Um, I don't know, I'm a big fan of Python and um, League of Gentlemen and stuff like that. And so, yeah, so it, comes, it comes out of that, I reckon, to a degree, you know. But, um, yeah, and maybe maybe a bit of um, kind of um, harder stuff like Alan Clark as well. Okay. I've got to admit, I'm a big personal fan of your previous endeavour, The Amazing Wizards. Yeah. Now, will we see a big screen version of that, perhaps? Would that no, I'm too a... old now. Too old? Yeah. I'm an amazing old wizard. <laughs> Would you, no, you wouldn't ever see yourself this character as a big screen. I could see it in a big screen version. Well, yeah, maybe, but I just, I don't know. I mean, I, we went, I remember going to see MTV about it about five, six years ago with Rob Hill, who's the other amazing wizard. And they said, and the people who interviewed us said, we really love your work, but is there anyone you know who's like, does exactly the same thing to you, but they're younger? And we went, no. <laughs> and that was the end of our, our Amazing Wizards TV show. Yeah. Yeah, had a brilliant holiday.